Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Oh Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jai Advaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Ki Sri Nityananda Prabhu Ki Sri Panchatattva Ki Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki all auspiciousness. By the mercy of Sri Sri Gornitai who have appeared in this world and by their dear most servitor Srila Prabhupada, the whole world has become illuminated. The sun, the moon have both arisen simultaneously on the horizon of Godadesh. So today we are going to Read from Madhulila, chapter 1, text 218. Om Agyanati Manandasya, Jananjana Savakaya, Chaksul Umidatam Jena, Tasmai Si Gurave Namaha, Sri Chaitanya Manu Vista, Stapitam Jena Bhutale, Svayam Rupa Kadamayam, Tadati Svapantantikam. Vatripa Deki Vakta Ganehi. Hori Hori Bole Shave Anandita Mane. We'll do the synonyms. Dvijane. Dvijane. Unto two persons. Prabhura. Prabhura. Of the Lord. Kripa. The mercy. Deki. Sin. Bhaktagane, all the devotees, Hari Hari, the holy name of the Lord, Bale, chant, Save, all, Anandita, cheerful, Mane, in the mind. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. When all the devotees saw the mercy of the Lord upon the two brothers, they were very gladdened. And they began to chant the holy name of the Lord, Hari Hari. Purport. Shilanaratam Das Thakur says, Chadiya Vaishnava Seva Nistara Payechi Keva. Unless one serves a Vaishnava, he cannot be delivered. The spiritual master initiates the disciples to deliver him. And if the disciple executes the order of the spiritual master and does not offend other Vaishnavas, his path is clear. Consequently, consequently Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu requested all the Vaishnavas present to show mercy upon the two brothers, Rupa and Sanatan, who had just been initiated by the Lord. When a Vaishnava sees that another Vaishnava is a recipient of the Lord's mercy, he becomes very happy. Vaishnavas are not envious. If a Vaishnava, by the mercy of the Lord, is empowered by him to distribute the Lord's holy name all over the world, other Vaishnavas become very joyful, that is, if they are truly Vaishnavas. 
One who is envious of the success of a Vaishnava is certainly not a Vaishnava himself, but an ordinary mundane man. Envy and jealousy are manifested by mundane people, not by Vaishnavas. Why should a Vaishnav be envious of another Vaishnav who is successful in spreading the holy name of the Lord? An actual Vaishnav is very pleased to accept another Vaishnava who is bestowing the Lord's mercy. A mundane person in the dress of a Vaishnava should not be respected but rejected. This is enjoined in the Shastras, Upeksha. The word Upeksha means neglect. One should neglect an envious person. A preacher's duty is to love the Supreme Personality of Godhead, make friendships with Vaishnavas, show mercy to the innocent, and reject or neglect those who are envious or jealous. There are many jealous people in the dress of Vaishnavas in this Krishna Consciousness movement, and they should be completely neglected. There is no need to serve a jealous person who is in the dress of a Vaishnava. When Narottam Das Thakur says, Sri Sri Gornitai Ki, Sri Jagannath Paladev Subhadra Devi Ki. When Srila Narottam Das Thakur says, Chadiya Vaishnava Seva Nistara Page Hikeva, he is indicating an actual Vaishnava, not an envious or jealous person in the dress of a Vaishnava. There are a number of important points which Srila Prabhupada has emphasized in this purport. Srila Prabhupada said about his purports that they are even more important than the verses themselves. This is because a pure devotee of the Lord like Srila Prabhupada is able to reveal the inner uh, message of the Lord. Uh, it is difficult to understand the Lord's words sometimes, but by the grace of Srila Prabhupada, uh, the Lord's pure devotee, everything becomes revealed. Because Krishna states that a devotee is in my heart and I am in the heart of my devotee. So there is a very uh, close interrelationship and dependence upon the Lord, between the Lord and his devotee. Sometimes the Lord conceals uh, his purpose uh, because he does not want those who are unqualified to understand or go too close uh, and commit offenses. But a pure devotee of the Lord is sometimes seen to be even more kind than the Lord himself. Because a pure devotee of the Lord is an extension of the mercy of the Lord. And therefore, knowing the true purpose of the Lord, he will reveal what even the Lord may not. Uh, we see, for example, I believe it was either Ramanujacharya or Madhvacharya who got this mantra. Ramanujacharya. I remember doing a tour of South India and they took me to one temple where Ramanujacharya had been initiated. And so we went up to the top of the temple. There were many bats living below. I remember that also. And they said, this is the place where Ramanujacharya got initiated. And after getting initiated, his guru told him, this is your mantra. And he told him, because generally mantras, especially Gayatri mantras, or certain mantras are given uh, secretly and not to be repeated. So he said, you don't repeat this, but you chant this for your own benefit. And, me, and it will give you, it will deliver you. Immediately Ramanujacharya went up on the top of this temple and called all the people of the neighboring area and immediately shouted out very loudly the mantra. <laughs> now, one may say he directly disobeyed his guru. But actually, he fulfilled the real desire of his guru. Because when he was asked, why did you he do this? He said, because I have so much faith in your words. I have no doubt that the mantra you have given me is powerful and it can deliver me, anyone who chants it. So I thought, why should I only think for myself? Let your mercy be obtained by everyone. 
So a Vaishnava is so kind. Srila Prabhupada wrote in a entry in his diary. Prabhupada used to keep a diary for some time. So in New York City he was keeping a diary when he first arrived. And it was on the Gaur Purnima day, 1966. Prabhupada was in New York City. And he made an entry in the diary that now it is Gaur Purnima. And I am here in New York all alone without any association of other Vaishnavas. And I am thinking and remembering Sri Mayapur Dham and Sri Vrindavan Dham and all of the devotees there. And I am feeling separation from them. He said, but I, have, I do not mind uh, that I am not able to be there, although I am feeling separation. He said, because not for my own selfish enjoyment, but in order to fulfill the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to deliver the conditioned souls. He said, I know very well that this is my purpose in coming here. And he said, I am prepared to forego sense gratification, even if it means going to hell to spread Krishna consciousness. So, this is the mercy of a Vaishnav, that uh, whatever may come, they do not mind if they can actually fulfill the mission of their Guru and the Guru Parampara. Uh, the members of the Krishna Consciousness Movement are working with great uh, faith in this principle. Uh, Srila Prabhupada emphasized the importance of um, preaching. He quoted his Guru Maharaj as saying, one who has life can preach. In other words, the real symptom of enthusiasm for a devotee is when he is absorbed in preaching activities. We saw Srila Prabhupada in the Kumbha Mela in 1971 on a single day take six preaching engagements continuously one after another. Each one of them was at least one hour long. And in each place Prabhupada gave a lecture and went from place to place to place to place non-stop. Sometimes we may do one or two preaching engagements and we feel tired. Prabhupada did six of them in a row. And, in fact, all of his activities were to show us that this preaching gives life. And uh, in the context of preaching, whatever program there was, Prabhupada always emphasized the importance of his books. When we were in India, he would not begin the program unless his books were displayed. And at the end of every program, he would have myself or someone else who was there stand up and describe each of the books. Each, each book had to be held up and we had to say something about the books. And Prabhupada's interest was whether or not the books were selling. He considered the program successful if people, after his lecture, bought books. So, whatever program Prabhupada established for preaching, books were the basis of that preaching program. And of course, the most uh, direct form of preaching with the books uh, was entrusted to the Sankirtan army. The devotees would go out and take their books in their bags and of course here they take them in their arms. I was carrying my book bag. I always travel with this bag. I call it my Shastra bag because it's the first bag that I went with to China and I still carry it. I used to take books to distribute in China and now I carry my Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Chaitamrita in it. It's very heavy. It always hurts my shoulder, but then I remember how many Sankirtan devotees have bad shoulders from carrying the books. And then I think it's okay. This is what is that called? Occupational hazard. Every type of job has its particular type of hazard. So the hazard, at least in the old days for the Sankirtan devotees, was a bad shoulder or something, or bad back. I don't know about nowadays. Is it still the same? More or less the same. Occupational hazard. Huh? A little bit back. But 
You see, we don't mind these things. Because it's just like when these soldiers go out in the battlefield, they would not like to return without some scrape. Some wound was like there. That was the metal. So if a Sankirtan devotee can complain after so many years of Sankirtan that my back aches, that is like their metal. And we know very good Sankirtan devotee. So, what is guru, what is disciple? Who's qualified to be guru, disciple? Uh, he who has been a perfect disciple can become a guru. And what is a perfect disciple? Who has complete faith in the words of his spiritual master. Because the essence of all instruction is faith in the order of guru. The spiritual master and faith and love for the spiritual master are the essence of all instructions. Because, uh, as it is mentioned here, uh, here, unless one serves a Vaishnava, he cannot be delivered. Straight. Prabhupada's words, you can't argue these words, you can't uh, concoct some interpretation, it's very simple, in very few words. Prabhupada has stated the essence of all instruction, to find a genuine Vaishnava and serve. And who is a genuine Vaishnava who repeats the words of the Guru Parampara without any change? He's Guru. And by his action, lives by those words. He's Guru. And to serve that person is the perfection of our life. So, uh, the condition, the further condition placed here is one thing is positive, one thing is negative. To serve the Guru, this is a positive injunction, that we must serve a pure devotee one who has understood the desire of his spiritual master and the desire of the disciplic succession. This is important because the spiritual master is not coming with any personal motive. I remember one letter Prabhupada wrote me about Sankirtan and he said that how pleased he was to see these books distributed. And he said, because it is not my desire. It is the desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the entire disciplic succession. It is not my order, Prabhupada said, that I'm giving to you to go out and sell these books. But it is coming down in the whole line of the Guru Parampara. And this is what empowers it and makes it strong. Any one of the members of our disciplic line can deliver the whole universe. We were once seeing a slideshow in Los Angeles and a picture of Bhakti Vinod Thakur came on the screen. And at that time, Prabhupada was saying to us, he was speaking something about Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, how powerful he is. And one of Prabhupada's disciples said, but so much you know, of the world, Prabhupada, has been done, delivered by you. And Prabhupada looked at him and said, if Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur wanted to, he could deliver the whole universe in an instant. He was so powerful. He said, but he left something for us to do out of his kindness. I think like that also about China. The Prabhupada landed in Hong Kong twice. And I think that by his being there twice and also thinking about the people of the Chinese area kindly, he has already delivered them. But he left something for us to do. Just like Prabhupada said, now I have built Iskhan. I have built the whole structure. You simply fill it in. Decorate the walls, decorate the floors, etc. But everything is done. And practically everything has been done in one sense. Prabhupada has made it easy. You know, by his going, just like Prabhupada, Prabhupada's going to Tompkins Square Park and sitting down uh, in, the, in a new field, by doing so, he made it possible for everyone else now to do that. I remember the first time we did Harinam, 
in a park in China, you know. It was in a city in Shanghai. And it was a wonderful experience to be able to sit down in this place knowing this is the first time that the holy names of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu and Hare Krishna Maha Mantra are going to be chanted in this major city, 15, 18 million people living in this city. And it was amazing. It was a cold day, you know, in the, in the fall or beginning of winter. And there weren't a whole lot of people around. And four or five of us sat down. And then we started to chant. And all I could do was remember Prabhupada and Tomkins Square Park. And I was thinking, it's I, could, and I could experience a little bit of what Prabhupada experienced. But Prabhupada made it easy because he did it. He did everything. He did everything from that to, you know, showing us how to print books, how to sell books, down to the most simple thing, how to, you know, close your suitcase. And today, my secretary was closing the suitcase and I was remembering one time in Bombay, a prophet showed me how to close the suitcase and he jumped up on top of the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> jumped up on the suitcase and after he shut it, he wrapped it up with rope and tied it really tightly and he said, this is how you tie a suitcase. <laughs> So what is it that Prabhupada did not show? He showed us how to clean the floor. One day, you know, he got down on his knees and he started cleaning the marble floor, showing us that the more you clean it, the floor will shine. But he said, don't use soap on the marble floor, just water. Soap will dull, make it dull. But water, regularly mopping with water, will gradually make it shine more and more. So from simple, simple things, you know, to the most advanced things, Prabhupada made it easy. So, serving a Vaishnav, to serve a Vaishnav, what does it mean? To know the heart and the desire of a Vaishnav. A disciple should learn to understand the heart of his spiritual master. Uh, in every respect. And a Vaishnav is not easy to understand. Even he may say to you, what is there? Still, there is going to be more and more that can be understood. Just like if we ask any one of Prabhupada's disciples, do you think that you knew Prabhupada's heart? I don't know if anyone, I know I cannot say yes. Can anyone say they knew everything that is in the heart of a pure devotee? The whole spiritual world is in that heart. So to serve a Vaishnava means to gradually be able to attune yourself so carefully and so that you resonate, you're able to resonate it to the same degree, in the same way, and be completely in sync to understand his desires, his mind. Uh, I gave the example of first class, second class, third class disciple. First, third class disciple, first class, second class. First class disciple knows the desire of the guru, even when not told, he already knows what to do. A second class disciple can only do after he's instructed. And a third class is like a rascal. Even though he's told, he still doesn't do it. So we should learn to anticipate. Uh, the guru will be kind, he will show, but more and more we can learn how to serve him. Serve him in every respect. Narottam Thakur served his guru in a most humble way. Uh, Ishvar Puri served his guru Maharaj in a very humble way. They were doing the work of clean, cleaning the latrine. The most humble service. And these were big, big acharyas in our line. The biggest of all. And what was their, uh, you know, what was their seva, their service? What was their Guru Seva at one stage in their life? Cleaning the latrine, the toilet. So humility is very important. If one is not very humble, how can he become a disciple, a servant? To be a servant is a great, uh, you know, uh, you can say a, uh, a great position to occupy. Normally in the material world, the materialist thinks, servant? I don't serve anyone. Everyone should serve me. 
But we take so much pleasure to be called Das or Dasi. This is our greatest fortune to be considered the Guru Das, the servant of our Guru. Or we say Das Anu Das, the servant of the servant of our Guru. Why? Because the servant lives on the prasad and mercy of the Guru. A servant doesn't have any independent thing. In the olden days, the servant wore the clothes of the master. The servant ate the food of the master. The servant lived in the house of the master. So the li servant lived by the mercy of the master. So we should think like this also. I live by the mercy of my guru. This is the positive injunction. What is the negative injunction? Not to offend the Vaishnavas. Offenses against devotees are such a serious thing that it can bring one down even from the point of bhava bhakti. Even from the point of practically perfection, one can lose everything if one offends the lotus feet of Vaishnava. It is said that everything can be forgiven, but, to f but it is impossible to get free from the offenses committed at the lotus feet of Vaishnava except by one method somehow or other obtaining the forgiveness from the Vaishnava who's offended. The example is there with Ambarish, Maharaj, and Dervasha Muni. Everyone knows that narration from the Bhagavatam. And it is such a serious thing that even if you, uh, even if a Vaishnava feels that somehow he's been offended, it can destroy you or disturb your bhajan, your worship. The example is given of the story of Srila Rupa Goswami. You know that narration. I think most of you have heard that. Huh? Right? Someone has told it here. <coughs> so even if a Vaishnava thinks that he's been offended, it can disturb your spiritual life. So look at our situation. We are living in the midst of so many devotees, and there's always the possibility of creating offenses. We may take each other for granted too easily. Uh, we may be inconsiderate. Or the thing that Prabhupada more or less focuses on in this purport, we may become envious of another person's advancement in spiritual life. That is actually the opposite nature of a Vaishnava. First of all, it's foolish. Because if someone else who you're with is more advanced than you, what does it mean? It means you're very fortunate. Because it means they have to look after you. As soon as you find someone who's more advanced, you should think, this is my happy day. This is my good fortune today. That I've met a person who's more advanced than I am. Now I can very comfortably take shelter of this person. That is, uh, that, that, is, that is what we see. This is what we learn. It's the association of senior devotees is always to be sought after. And just like, it's not just in terms of training in a particular practical way, just like someone may be an expert book distributor. They can train us. But what we really want to be trained in is the consciousness of how to become an expert servant of the spiritual master. And we don't care that, oh, your spiritual master is different than my spiritual master, so you can't train me. I have to be trained by someone who has the same spiritual master. No. That's, that is a sectarian spirit. That is, that, is a, that is offensive mentality. We want to see who is an expert servant of this spiritual master. Never mind who their guru may be. And that is the person that we want to associate with. So to be envious of another person's advancement means that we practically kill our chances for spiritual life. We should appreciate it. You can't chant in that mood. If you're finding difficulty in your chanting, 
that you cannot make progress nicely. You can trace out, usually, the cause is offenses against other devotees or thinking in an offensive mood. Because if actually you have love and respect, immediately you're able to take shelter of the Holy Name. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given. This is, you know, we hear about the word Siddha Pranali. Initiation, Siddha Pranali means the uh, path leading to perfection or the initiation process which leads to perfection. And sometimes in the olden days they would give a mantra or maybe a mantra which you chant. But Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that our Siddha Pranali mantra is Trinata Pisa Nichaino Tarawada Pisa Ishnana Amanina Manandaira Kirtanya Sadati. He said this is the Siddha, this is the mantra which leads to perfection. Be more humble than a blade of grass. Be more tolerant than a straw in the street. Give all you know, praise and appreciation to others, but don't expect any for yourself. And in this way, you'll be able to chant the Hare Krishna mantra very easily. So one of the things that we have to do when we begin to chant every day, when we chant our japa, is that we should pray to Harinam. Harinam means the holy name of the Lord. The holy name of the Lord is the, is the person of the Lord. He is the personality of the Lord. It is not that the holy name is something different than Krishna. Nama Nami No, the name and Krishna are not different. So, to begin with, we should pray very humbly, just like we see Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has written so many nice prayers, humbly admitting his own shortcomings. Now, why has he done this? Because this is the mood of a great devotee. So, he sees, first of all, his own disqualification. And placing oneself in such a humble mood allows us to sit and pray, call out to the Holy Name with great feeling. Otherwise, sometimes devotees are not going to get rounds chanted and they just argue, 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 and they're not concentrated. No, this is the greatest opportunity of the day. Actually, all activities in Krishna consciousness are great opportunities, but it's certainly a very relishable opportunity to sit down and now I'm going to be able to associate by the mercy of my spiritual master and the Vaishnavas, I'm going to be able to associate with Krishna and his, and his internal energy, pleasure potency, Srimati Radharani. I'm going to get to be able to hear their holy names. And then you have to realize, what is my lack of qualified? I'm not very qualified. Bhaktivinoda Thakur, so many faults he found in himself. If you hear his prayers, it's... You know, and he wasn't just doing this as a show. He felt this way. And Prabhupada sometimes would present himself like that. I'm no good qualification. So devotee has to think that way. Why? First of all, it's true. We have so many disqualifications. But you, Krishna, are so kind. My dear spiritual master, you are so kind. I pray to my spiritual master, please be present with me. And now let me chant it here. And we call out Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, 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 Ram. Then we can take shelter. <coughs> Krishna's holy name. And then we can get so much strength. When you get in this mood and you chant deeply for two hours your japa, and you pray and read and offer obeisances and begin to read and get the transcendental knowledge, then when you go out, you're invincible. You can go right out on Sankirtan and Maya will not touch you. You'll, Krishna will give you the words to speak. He'll give you the ability to move your body and to engage the people in just the right way to make them want to take a book. Th this is not a material activity. It's not material. So we have to be moved. Mahatmanas to Mamparta Devim Prakrita Mashrita. This is the description of a Sankirtan devotee. He's a Mahatma. He's a great soul. Why? Because it's described the great souls are always engaged. Samahatma Siddhartha, they see everyone equally, they see the soul. 
And they know how to deal with the consciousness which is coming from the soul. If you see the soul, it means to see the consciousness. Not that you, should, you may see the soul one day, but to begin with, we can see the consciousness. And that much you can do. You can learn pretty quickly as a preacher to see the consciousness of others and to know how to speak in such a way to make them, to wake up that sleeping consciousness. So, that requires some special empowerment. And what is that empowerment? First of all, you have to know, I'm not powerful. I have no power of my own. That power is coming from Krishna, from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Through my guru, through the guru parampara, it is coming to me. You have to take shelter. You have to be humble. And if you're envious of others, oh, very bad. Because what is the question of envy? A Vaishnava will give you everything they have. If you go to someone, you see, who's a Vaishnava, whatever you ask, they'll give you. That's the nature of a Vaishnava. The problem is that we don't know how to ask for the right thing. That's the problem. Prabhupada gives the example. You go to a wealthy man, you only ask for $10. He'll, he'll give you $10. And Krishna says in one verse, you want material enjoyment? Very easy. And I'll give you everything, even liberation. There's a verse that says, even liberation, very easy to obtain. But to get Krishna Bhakti, oh, that is very difficult. Because by that Bhakti, Krishna becomes controlled. So what is it that you are envious of a Vaishnava for? What do you think that a Vaishnava will not give you what he has? He'll give you everything. But you have to know how to ask for it. You have to sincerely want it. Unfortunately, we don't want very much. So we don't know how to associate with those who are more advanced. But there's no reason to be envious. They'll give you whatever they have. So Prabhupada is taking a lot of effort on this purport, on this point. An actual Vaishnava is very pleased to accept another Vaishnava who is bestowing the Lord's mercy. He makes a very bold statement. He says, uh, there are many jealous people in the dress of Vaishnavas in this Krishna consciousness movement. Why did Prabhupada write that? And what did he mean by that? If we take it at its face value, it means just what Prabhupada said there. That jealousy is there as part of the conditioned nature. And it's very unfortunate. This is one of the greatest stumbling blocks for spiritual advancement. To not wish others well. If you want this movement to be successful, then we have to give ourselves fully to each other. When we say, serve the spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada wrote me once saying that Krishna becomes so pleased when you take responsibility for helping others. And he used to enjoin, and here also, become Madhyam. Madhyam Bhakta. Madhyam Bhagavata. And Madhyam Bhagavata means someone who worships Krishna, is friendsh has friendship with the devotees, gives his mercy to the innocent, and avoids those who are atheists. So friendship, we have to give friendship to each other. What is the meaning of friendship? Srila Rupa Goswami has given Priti Lakshanam, Satvidam Priti Lakshanam, six ways of loving exchange. And two very important ways are to have close friendships where you share realizations with another person. Hopefully you're getting some realizations. 
If after many years you got no realizations, that's not very good. What's the advantage of sharing? You can make benefit from another person's experiences and save so much time in your own advancement. Therefore, we should always seek out more advanced association. And we should reveal our heart. Unless we, and if, on the other hand, we feel I can't reveal my heart to someone who's more advanced, that's not very good. You have to have enough friends that you can actually reveal your heart to. The karmis have this on their level. They get strength from this. Prabhupada said in Nectar of Instruction, they make clubs and social organizations for business and for other things. So this movement is a type of club or organization, but it's for spreading Krishna consciousness and becoming Krishna conscious. But there has to be close relationships. And that has to be based on respect and trust. Love and trust, Prabhupada used to say. He said, this movement will only be able to hold together if there is love and trust. And what is the basis of that? That we have a common goal. That common goal is to surrender ourselves wholly and totally unto the lotus feet of Krishna. You can trust a person if that's their motive. If they have other things in their mind, profit, adoration, distinction, then I hold back some of my trust. But if I see year after year after year that a person is rendering dedicated service unconditionally, then I have to give my trust to that person. So to do anything else besides that is an offense. So we have to be so careful even not to think of offenses. Even if we start becoming offensive in the mind, that's very dangerous. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed his mercy on Sri Rupa and Sri Sanatan, and then all the devotees became so happy. Why? Because they thought, now we're all delivered. By Lord Chaitanya bestowing mercy on Srila Rupa and Sri Sanatan Goswami, what did he do? He delivered the whole world. That's why they chanted Hari Hari. Now they thought, now the world is delivered. They could understand the degree of mercy bestowed on Srila Rupa Goswami was enough to deliver the whole world. Prabhupada said the Krishna consciousness movement, you read the beginning of Nectar of Instruction, the preface. This Krishna consciousness movement is going on, on under the direction. You have it? Do we have a copy of it here? Nectar of Instruction. This Krishna consciousness movement is going on under the direction of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada says. So you can understand how pleased all the devotees were when they saw now these two persons are there. And what was the result? Srila Sanatan Goswami, who Rupa Goswami considered to be not just his older brother, but his guru. He gave he was like a father to all the people. As we become more advanced to Krishna consciousness, we become like fathers or like mothers for all the people, the population. Actually, you have to think like that. When you go out in Sankirtan, you have to think, these are all people who, are, who I have to give some care to, some protection to, some shelter to. Not sentimentally, but through these books. So, we should also do the same. When we see someone is making advancement, someone is showing some excellence in a particular way, we should, be, we should say, Hari, Hari. Very good, very good. Now my day has become fortunate. My life will be fortunate because I have such an advanced person to associate. I'll stop here and ask if anyone has any questions or comments. Maybe sure there are any suitable.
can say something. Questions? What do you send over in your library? They have so many books in this library. In Bhakti Sandarva, it is described the different types of offenses, uh, which and what the reactions are in terms of Vaishnava Prabhu. This is where it is. They may have that book here. I'll try to see tomorrow. Yes, that's where it is. Bhakti Sandarva. And it's very interesting because it tells, like, you can understand what type of offenses you've committed by just reading about what the reactions are.